What's up design family and welcome to another episode of Fit Design TV. So glad to have you back on the channel. On today's episode, we'll be looking at how to scale the measurements for men's performance tees. We're specifically going to be looking at how to scale measurements in the context of sportswear and activewear because as we know, activewear and sportswear have typically more of an athletic cut and that type of grading and that type of kind of scaling of measurements is very specific. So I want to reach out to that audience and give you guys the specific ways in which we consider scaling measurements from small to medium, medium to large, large to excel. That's been a very requested video, so we're very excited to bring you guys the knowledge and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll feel a little bit more confident and typically understand how measurements scale between sizes and potentially that's something that you can apply towards your own business, towards your own tech pads. Hey guys, and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around, you're in for a good one. In order to begin, we'll look at a standard men's set and sleeve t-shirt and we'll consider the key points of measurements or the POMs that we'll have to consider when scaling up our sizes. We'll start from top to bottom. We're gonna look at the neck half width and I wanna give this a preface by saying we'll be looking at the garments in terms of their technical measurements, not necessarily in terms of consumer size measurements. We've done a video on in terms of how to take these measurements that I highly recommend you watch but when it comes to this, I'm gonna assume that you know how to use a measuring tape and to measure out with a garment flat on the ground and to take these half technical measurements. So we'll be looking at the collar half width measurement, how that scales between small, medium, large, XL. And for the sake of this video, we'll be looking at the four standard sizing, which are small, medium, large, XL, and we'll be looking at them in US sizing. So we won't be looking at a size four or size six, we'll be going in standard S, M, L, XL. When it comes to a men's standard set in sleeve, like I mentioned, we'll consider the collar half width going from seam to seam. How does that measurement scale? And then we'll look at the chest half width, which we typically measure from armpit to armpit, straight across the waist half width and the bottom half width. And then when it comes to the sleeves, we'll look at the sleeve length from top of shoulder, since this is a set in sleeve, to edge of the hem, the cuff half width, and last but not least, we'll pretty much look at the center back length. And then we'll look at different variants of men's t-shirts. Like I mentioned, this is a set and sleeve. So the point of measurement in which we consider the sleeve length is a bit different than a raglan sleeve where there's no shoulder seam. So we'll look at that as well. And then we'll look at a short sleeve version versus a long sleeve version and how the measurements and those are affected. For instance, a sleeve length on a long sleeve will grade a bit differently than the sleeve length on a short sleeve. The sleeve length on a raglan sleeve will scale a little bit differently than a sleeve length on a set and sleeve. If you guys are confused, don't worry. I'll run you guys through it and I'll be as thorough and as clear as possible. Starting off at the top, you'll notice a trend. Smaller measurements scale in a smaller fashion. And that makes sense, right? If you have less of a distance to go, chances are your difference in measurements between sizes is going to be less extreme. And really this is articulated well in the collar half width. For instance, on this size large measurement, we have a 8.25 inch collar half width. When we go to our Excel, we're scaling up by 0.25 inches, which typically accounts for around 0.5 inches all the way around, but the measurement increase is, oh, is very tiny. It's quite minuscule. We're going from 8.25 on a large to around 8.5 on an XL. When it comes to a medium, we'll scale down from our, our large size. So we'll go from 8.25 to eight. And then for a small, we'll go again, another 0.25 inches from eight to 7.75. So it's quite simple. And obviously this is a rule of thumb. It does differ. And I don't want to give you this as a sort of be all end all, but it is a clear representation of how measurements scale. And you can alter this according to your preferences. For instance, if you have a collar that is a lot more tightly fitted, the scaling might be a little bit more extreme because you just have less space to work with and you need to be more conscious about the way you scale. 
This is already a very fair fitting collar, so even someone who's an XL could probably get inside this collar and still be comfortable. So the need to scale is not as much, and we're just scaling so that proportionally the collar is in line with the rest of the t-shirt, right? If you can imagine putting on the collar from a size small on the chest of a size XL, that just wouldn't make sense. They wouldn't line up. So it's also important to figure out the functionality of the scaling, but also how something looks to make sure everything is scaled appropriately and proportionately to make a beautiful garment that just looks right. Next, when it comes to our half measurements or our smaller measurements, we'll look at our sleeve length. On a set and sleeve, that sleeve length is measured from the top of the shoulder, so this seam, out to the edge of the hem. And on this garment, we're looking at a 7.75 inch sleeve length. How does that scale from a large to an XL? Well, quite similar actually to our collar half width. It scales around 0.25 inches on a set in sleeve, short sleeve garment. So when we go from a large to an XL, we're going from 7.75 to eight. And when we're going from a large to a medium, we're going from 7.75 to 7.5. And then we're going from a medium to a small, we're going from 7.75 to 7.5. Right, the measurement is quite tiny here, and obviously this is because it is a smaller pattern piece. However, if we're looking at a raglan sleeve where you essentially have no shoulder seam, you essentially have your collar or your sleeve length run all the way from your collar all the way out to your hem, to your, uh, to your wrist hem, that measurement difference is gonna be a lot more extreme than in your set and sleeve because you just have more distance to cover. So again, logic comes in, into play here. If I have more distance to cover, that means that any changes in body shape are going to be exacerbated over that longer length. So we need to account for that by adding more length. So on a short sleeve, raglan sleeve t-shirt, we typically say scale around 0.5 inches. So if we have something that's a 12.5 inch from edge of collar to end of sleeve length on a size medium per se, we want to go up to a size large, that would be a 13. And if we want to go from a size large to a size XL, that would be 13.5. If we want to go from a size medium to a size small, we go from 12.5 and we'll scale down by 0.5 to 12. So it's quite simple. And again, this is a rule of thumb. This is not necessarily something that's a be all end all, but I found that it's a good indicator of where your measurements should sit and everything scales beautifully and proportionally. Well then, when it comes to a long sleeve raglan sleeve, it's a bit different. Now we have even more length than a short sleeve. So we're going from something like 29.5 on a medium and we're scaling that up by around one inch to our, let's just say our next size. So for 29.5 on a medium, we're gonna go for 30.5 on a large. And then when it comes to an XL, we're going from 30.5 to 31.5. And when we're going from a medium to a small, we go from 29.5 to 28.5. So our scaling here on a raglan sleeve, long sleeve, is around one inch proportionally. Well, what if we have a set in sleeve, long sleeve? That's another use case scenario. There's a bit of a difference here. So we now no longer have the shoulder seam incorporated into our scaling. And it's important to note that also shoulder to shoulder measurements are also scaled. That's not something that we're gonna be considering in this video, but know that they also differ around 0.2 to 0.25 between measurements from collar to shoulder. But when it comes to a set and sleeve, we're gonna again be measuring from the top of the shoulder all the way down to the edge of the sleeve. We mentioned that it's one inch on a raglan sleeve, long sleeve, it's around 0.75 inches. You see where that other 0.25 inches is getting eaten up. It's getting eaten up in the shoulder. So again, it all makes sense mathematically as well when you look at it. So we go from a raglan sleeve to a set and sleeve, long sleeve, if we're operating at around 24.5 in terms of our sleeve length on a medium, we'll be looking at 25.25 on a large and 26 on a XL. And on a small, we'll be looking at 23.75. So that's the way that we're scaling when it comes to our sleeve lengths. We've mentioned again, to recap, we mentioned our set and sleeve short sleeve versus our set and sleeve long sleeve. We mentioned our raglan sleeve short sleeve versus our set and sleeve raglan sleeve or our set and sleeve short sleeve and our set and sleeve long sleeve versus our raglan sleeve short sleeve and our raglan sleeve long sleeve. We're typically going from 0.25 inches between sizes on a set and sleeve short sleeve 
to all the way up to one inch on a raglan sleeve long sleeve. So bear this in mind, use this guide when you're looking at your measurements and do understand what your garment is. So if you're looking at a raglan sleeve, make sure that you're actually considering the grading for a raglan sleeve. Next, we'll look at our chest half width. That's an area where a lot of people get caught up because it is one of the key points of measurements to consider when you're scaling up. The last thing you wanna do is to specify the same chest that you have on a small, as on a medium, and as a large. You need to make sure that this is an area where people are really are getting scaled up. Someone with an XL chest is going to be very different than someone with a small chest, and the garment is gonna fit extremely differently. So we'll start off with this, a size large. We're looking at a chest width of 21.5 on a size large. Typically, when it comes to a performance tee where the fit is a little bit more athletic, the grading between chest half width, and again, we're talking about half width here, not full length, is around 1.25 to 1.5. It depends on the specific scenario, but here we'll look at it as around 1.25 as a nice middle ground. On a large, 21.5. On a medium, we're gonna be going down 1.25, so 21.5, we'll go down to 20.25, and then from a medium to a small, I typically like to scale around one, around one inch, not more than that, just because you don't wanna make your chest too tight, and at the same time, your garment is already tightly fitted, so you have less fabric to play with. If you had something that's more of a standard fit, like a Hanes tee, you could go up to 1.5 to sometimes even two between sizes, but when it comes to an athletic cut, we wanna make sure that we're not shaving off or we're not adding on too much extra fabric between sizes. I like to hover around 1.25 to one, sometimes 1.5 depending on the garment itself, but we've gone down from a medium to small by one, but we're gonna go up from a medium to a large by 1.25 and from a large to an XL by 1.25. So that's pretty much it for the chest half width. And the beauty of this method is your waist half width and your bottom half width will follow suit. So those measurements will also scale proportionally. It doesn't make sense to have your waist scale a bit differently than your chest. Obviously we are proportional in the way that we change. It's not like your chest is going to be this extremely different measurement scale than your waist. Obviously, when it comes to bodybuilders and stuff, that is a very specific use case scenario. Here, we're talking about more athletic garments, where you're not gonna have these insane differences between your waist and your chest width and your bottom width measurements scaling at the same time. We found that scaling them appropriately or proportionally works. Your waist half width goes from a large to an XL 1.25, from a large to a medium 1.25, and from a large or medium to a small around one inch. The same is true for your bottom half width. Small to medium, one. Medium to large, 1.25. Large to XL, 1.25. And last but not least, when it comes to the granddaddy of measurements, we'll be looking at our center back length. Getting the right length is key when looking at your measurements. And it's quite simple. It's one of the simplest measurements to scale. Our center back length is measured from the center of our back collar on the stitch line all the way down to our bottom hem to where the hem folds over. On this garment, it's a large, we have a 29 inch center back. When it comes to scaling, we'll scale it from a size large to a size XL by one inch. So we'll go from 29.5 to or 29 to 30. Then we'll go from a size medium or from a size large to a size medium. We'll go from 29 to 28. And then we'll go from a size medium to a size small. We'll go from 28 to 27. So the grading here is quite consistent. It's around one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch. And again, you can alter this depending on your use case scenario. If you have a scallop bottom hem where you have an exaggerated hem where you might want to scale it a bit less because it's already quite lengthened on a size medium and you don't want it to look like a dress by the time you get up to your XLs. It's very important to bear in mind, but what we find for most garments that feature like a straight bottom hem or a slightly scooped around a two inch or three inch scoop, a one inch grade is more than enough and you don't wanna exceed that. You can even go underneath it sometimes. Again, if you have a hem that's already in the longer or a longer build, like you have a lengthened tee, you might wanna scale that a bit less than something where you have a straight bottom hem where it's already sitting naturally on the waist versus something that's already sitting in an extended sense. So that's pretty much it, guys. 
It's not rocket science, it's quite simple. Uh, use these as a guideline for grading your measurements. Hopefully you have a key understanding of how certain measurements scale. If you guys think I missed out any important points of measurements that you might want me to provide more feedback on, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Like we kind of mentioned the shoulder to shoulder. I don't know if a lot of people use that. We don't personally, but I do know how it scales. So if you guys want to see that, let me know. If you guys want to see more videos like this where we take you through key garment types and we'll show you how the measurements scale between sizes, let us know. We'll be more than happy to provide that info. Thank you guys again for tuning in to Fit Design TV. We put out great videos every Wednesday and every Sunday. I highly recommend you tune in. Thank you guys again. Until next time, be awesome.